Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's go ahead and use the Laplace transform technique to solve the non-homogeneous equation that we used on the last video where we only used the homogeneous part. Still, taking the Laplace transform of y double prime looks like this and the Laplace transform of y prime looks like this. Now, remember that normally we're given the initial conditions, initial values for y and y prime when time equals zero. We don't have that in this example, but I want to show you we can still use the Laplace transform even if we don't get these initial values by simply assuming that these are going to be constants. So when we plug that into the equation here, we're going to take the Laplace transform of every term on the left and the right side of this equation. So this becomes the Laplace transform of y double prime plus the Laplace transform of y must equal the Laplace transform of the cosine of t. So when we plug in what those are equal to, here we get s squared times the Laplace transform of y minus s times, and since we don't know what y prime evaluated at zero is, we're simply going to call that a constant, call it c1, minus, and since we don't know what this evaluated is at t equals zero, we're simply going to call that c2 plus the Laplace transform of y equals the Laplace transform of the cosine of t, which is equal to s divided by s squared plus 1. All right, so what we can do here is we can move these to the right side and factor out a Laplace transform of y. So on the left side, we get Laplace transform of y times we have s squared plus 1 left is equal to s divided by s squared plus 1, a little shorter here, plus s c1 plus c2. And now finally, to solve for the Laplace transform of y, we divide both sides by s squared plus 1. So here we get Laplace transform of y is equal to s divided by s squared plus 1 quantity squared plus sc1 over s squared plus 1 plus c, c sub 2 over uh, s squared plus 1. And right away we can look at these two right here because if we're going to take the inverse Laplace transform we can then say that y is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of, and here I'm going to leave this alone for now, we'll attack this in just a little bit, We'll just leave it like that. We're going to take the inverse Laplace transform of this. But if I take the inverse Laplace transform of this, I get plus c1 times the cosine of t plus c2 times the sine of t. And right away we realize that this here represents the homogeneous part of the solution. This will represent the particular part of the solution, so now we have to solve for this. Remember again that c1 and c2 are not known because we were not given the initial values of y and y prime. Now here we're going to need the technique of partial fractions. What we're going to do is we'll do it on the side here. We have s divided by s squared plus 1 quantity squared. This can be written as as plus b over s squared plus 1 plus cs plus d over s squared plus 1 quantity squared. And so what we're going to do now is try to find the values for a, b, c, and d. We can do that by multiplying here the top and the bottom by s squared plus 1. So here we get s over s squared plus 1 quantity squared is equal to as plus b times the quantity s squared plus 1 divided by s squared plus 1 quantity squared. And then here we get plus cs plus d over s squared plus 1 quantity squared. And now notice that all the denominators are the same, s squared plus 1 quantity squared. So now we should be able to solve for a, b, c, and d in the numerator. First, we'll multiply this out, and so we can say the numerator then becomes s is going to be equal to as cubed plus as, let's see here, plus bs squared, 
And then here we have AS plus CS. So we have plus A plus C times S when I take this term, AS times 1 and CS combined. And then we have B times 1 and D, so plus B plus D. So from that, I can conclude that A must equal 0, B must equal 0, A plus C must equal 1, because this coefficient must equal to this coefficient, but since A is 0, this can then conclude that C is therefore equal to 1. So we have A equals 0, B equals 0, and we have B plus D equals 0. But since B is equal to 0, that means D must equal 0 as well. So now we have all the coefficients of this part of the equation. So the, the only coefficient that's left is C. C is the only surviving coefficient, which means that this can then become as follows. So Y is equal to the Laplace transform of, notice it's going to be this right here, but only with C having a value. So this is 0, this is 0, this is 0. So C being equal to 1, we then notice that this then becomes the Laplace transform of S divided by S squared plus 1 plus this part of the solution, C1 times the cosine of T plus C2 times the sine of T. And, oh, 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 uh, can't forget that. I think that is square, right? Because I have a CS. So C is one, so I, I can't forget the square right there, which I just did. All right. So now what we have to do next is we need to take the inverse Laplace transform of that, and that is equal to one half times T times the sine of T plus C1 cosine of T plus C2 sine of t. Now let's go see if we get the same result as what we have up there. So first of all, we do have these two parts right here, which is part of the homogeneous part of the equation. And here we do have the one half t sine of t right there. So we have this, but somehow we don't have one quarter the cosine of t. But that should not be a mystery because when you look at it, we already have a c1 times the cosine of t and one quarter times the cosine of t. In other words, this part of the particular solution actually gets buried in the part of the homogeneous solution because C plus one quarter is simply just another constant. And so we can see that this part of the solution actually normally would get buried inside the homogeneous part. And this is the only surviving part of the particular solution, which means we did find the correct solution using the Laplace transform technique. And that's how it's done.